are the seven chaos. Chaos is power. Power is enriched by the heart. The controller is the one that unifies the chaos. Only you can do this. Stop the chaos emerald. Uh, goodbye, Space Lizard. Is it gone? Is that what Chaos Control is? Since we've stopped the Chaos Emerald, why is the Space Colony still on a crash course to Earth? Knuckles, you okay there? With the power of the Chaos Emeralds. And Sonic and Shadow are charging their J.O. crystals. It's the final hazard, the final boss of the game, with the most epic as frick music in the back. So, so you play as Sonic and Shadow through the level. I'm sorry, this music's just too epic. So, um, when you swap sides, your ring count is set to like 50, and you have that long to, um, you know, you deplete like one ring per second. Yeah, I'm looking at the ring counter and the, the time itself. You deplete one ring per second, so you have 50 seconds to hit this little growth. And you can hit both rumpers, I believe, to change character. And a nice touch of this battle, I I'm gonna just own it, obviously, but a nice touch of this battle is the longer you take, um, the redder the screen gets as you enter Earth's atmosphere. This game also starts the trend of, like, space battles with Supersonic. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Uh... Sonic 3 Knuckles' is secret final boss does. I forgot about that. Actually, it's final boss and secret final boss, technically. Uh, but yes, yeah, super space battles. Always a gimmick at Sonic. Not the laser beams. Oh. And and if you switch character, like the the character you switch to will have less rings. It seems they 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 screw off to go collect rings once you uh swap. Oh come on. I'm fine, Sanic. Oh my god, please. Boy! <laughs> I got overconfident, I didn't switch to Sonic. 
thought it'd be fitting if Shadow killed his own prototype. The song is done by Crush40. Um, the song's called Live and Learn, first of all. It's, it's done by Crush40, which returned from Sonic Adventure. They also did the, the final boss music for that game. And they do a lot of music for the rest of the franchise. They did... Um, uh, what, what's the, I have no freaking clue what the song is in Shadow the Hedgehog, but I'm pretty sure they did the final boss song for that. They probably did... Um, Sonic Heroes' final boss? I don't think they did. Um, just by in tone of Sonic Heroes, but um, they did a lot of Sonic 06 music. They did covers for pretty much every one of the character themes. Sonic's Shadows, not Silver's, I don't think. And they did um, the final theme, His World, of course. They, they, they didn't do it, they covered it. Okay, let's see if I can do it this time. Yep. At least the guys talking on the radio aren't as annoying as the one in, in Generations. I think it's shooting a homing attack, says 300 times in a row. Every time it homing attacks. Am I not hitting it? This is what you wanted, right? This is my promise I made to you. Now, I'm not sure if it's explained in, in this game or even elaborated on. Uh, I know Rouge later on is carrying one of the rings around Shadow's wrists. But in Sonic X, they go on to tell that the rings around Shadow's... That's racist. The, the rings around Shadow's wrists are inhibitor rings, which keep them from using, from draining too much power too quickly. I, I assume chaos energy, since Shadow has a natural ability to use that. So in, in Sonic X, during that sequence, I believe he takes off both his rings, and that's what allows him to teleport Space Colony bark, ar arc back on, onto course. See, that's one of his rings there. So I'm pretty sure he took them off here you just weren't told to carry out the revenge on all those who live here on earth he was what he was a brave and heroic hedgehog who gave his life to save this planet shadow the hedgehog i guess you're right as a child i looked up to my grandfather because of all the great things he accomplished in his life he was my hero I wanted to be a great scientist like him. What? Did he really mean to destroy us? I don't know, but what I do know is... We all did it together! You're right. 
there's a, a cut line there where Eggman says this doesn't change anything, we're still enemies. They removed it due to mood whiplash. Nah, I think I'm gonna give up this line of work. Too much work for too little pay. Anyway, I've got something better than jewels that I'm thinking about right now. It'll all work out. You'll see. If you say so. Created the ultimate life form. What's the matter, Sonic? Oh, it's nothing. Come on, let's go home to the planet as cool and blue as me. Well, that was Sonic Adventure 2. Um, Sonic Adventure 2, I like it a lot, but it's a very mixed opinion game. As time went on, people started disliking it, disliking more and more. I think that's just because of its aging. You know, when both Sonic Adventures first came out, they were given pretty high scores, but as they age, they get lower and lower scores. People even would compare this game in the first Sonic Adventure to unplayable train wrecks like 06, which is uh, surprising. Just for reference here, at the end of our journey, I just want to show everyone the map and how many bloody stages there are in this game. There is 31 in total with Cannon's core being technically like 5 levels in one, but they're mini levels. And just like which areas, I like this map because it kind of shows you like which areas they take place in. For example, City Escape is here and it's the only level that looks like it does. Radical Highway is here, and then Tails' level, Mission Street, is right next to it because they're very similar in in locale and stuff like that, and then Chow, Chow Garden's on like a floating Chow Island for some reason, but yeah. Then Aquatic Mine is in an off area of Pumpkin Hill, so you go to Pumpkin Hill to Aquatic Mine, um, White Jungle, Green Forest, Security Hall, Iron Gate, and Prison Lane all take place within the next to each other, same with Metal Harbor and Weapons Bed. Then, so you can see Pumpkin Hill and Sky Rail are next to each other, and that that's its own thing. Um, Wild Canyon, like, it's all brown and stuff because it's Wild Canyon, and then Dry Lagoon is all green, like the actual levels. Then Eggman starts really far away from his base and then gets all the way to it until starts a little bit closer. Sonic breaks into the pyramid. Rouge breaks into the pyramid, and Knuckles has to find the keys to the main room. And that's reflected in there the icons placement. Then, uh, for those wondering, this is where Meteor Herd was. Like, it's right underneath Space Colony Arc's face. Same with, um, Mad Space. You can see the little planetoids there. There's a lot of detail that went into this map. I believe the, the uh, desert levels also had four pyramids in total. Cannon's core is obviously in the cannon, and then Lost Colony, Eternal Engine, are, are on in the inside, whatever. Cosmic Wall, though, I, I like how they position it right underneath the cannon, or uh, not the cannon, the Spade Colony. The same with Sonic's level, and you can even see the railings and stuff like that for Sonic's level, Sonic and Shadows, where 
Sonic starts here and it's trying to get to the core of the cannon or whatever to stop it and Shadow stop starts behind him and tries to follow him. Here we go. Oh boy, invincibility. Oh, 